Good morning and welcome to another episode of 5 Games 5 Minutes from aconelectron.co.uk. Nightmare Maze was originally released by MRM, who promptly shut up shop. It re-emerged on Blue Ribbon's budget range a little later. In it, you play Sleepy Joe, who is trapped in an oblique projection style maze. To escape, he needs to collect an ever-increasing number of keys. Randomly milling around in the maze are four monsters, which have to be completely avoided. Whilst avoiding them is not too difficult in itself, they do have a nasty habit of getting in Jill's way. The problem is that time is in short supply, so you end up having to take risks to get hold of the keys that you need. When you've got ten of them, you also need to find your way back to the door. Now and then a cup of black coffee appears, and if it does, you should make a beeline for it. Once drank, it removes all monsters for about 15 seconds. Usually enough time to run around and collect four keys that might otherwise take you much, much longer. This game is an original idea, and it's also not very demanding. Although being picked off just a few steps from the final doorway may lead to anguish screaming. Ooh, Percy Penguin next day. There won't be many Acorn Electron users who didn't come across this one. Superior just kept on releasing, licensing and re-releasing it. How to play is simple. You run around an overhead maze, trying to position yourself next to one of the large ice cubes that make up its walls. Also in the maze are a number of snow bees, which will come steaming towards you, destroying any cubes in their way. As soon as you see an opening, leap upon it and hurl a cube in their direction. That's essentially the whole game which is quite shoddily put together for a superior release. Staying positive, it's done in high res mode, which means that you get a much larger playing area than the other games of this genre. Plus, it's fairly playable, even if you need the reactions of a superhero to get very far. What can't be excused though, is the lack of high score table, lack of joystick option, and the dull monochrome page of instructions that start the game. Probably just a little bit better than average overall. Pipe Lunacy was originally published in the Micro User magazine, but as it's written by the irrepressible Mike Williams, I'm sure it was originally destined for Blue Ribbon's budget range. It's certainly a superior type-in game. A blatant rip-off of Pipe Mania, you must lay pieces of pipe in an arrangement so that liquid runs from the start for a minimum number of sections. A timer counts down to give you some time to engage your brain before the heat is on. On later levels, one-way sections and slow pipe sections are also introduced. It's all very colourful and addictive. However, when compared with the original, there's something amiss about the pipe pieces on offer here. You can get stuck needing a pipe section, which just absolutely refuses to appear. Here, looking for one piece, I lay over 20 separate pieces and still don't find it. For this reason, and the lack of passwords, two-player option or bonus sections, it compares badly with the original. Alphatron is a peculiar game, in which you must stop a never-ending supply of missiles from striking a nuclear power plant. You control a spaceship with a limited supply of fuel. You must wait for a missile to appear, blast off, thrust after it, catch up with it, and then shoot it out of the sky. There are four screens dividing your start position from the nuclear plant, and you can tell where you are and where the current missile is by glancing at the small radar in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Catching up with the missile is usually possible, but as you will start to fall out of the sky if you release the thrust key, shooting it is more tricky. You also need to be wary of your remaining fuel, because you can only recharge your spaceship on the very first screen. The landing pad also requires pixel-perfect accuracy as you touch down upon it. To be sure, Alphatron is a bit of a different idea, but a few missiles shot down and you'll quickly gather that there's nothing much to see here. Despite almost palpable disapproval from the Acorn gaming press by this point, alternative software wasn't ready to spare us from the Triple Decker series. In number 9 we get Break Free, Missile Jammer and Code Breaker. Break Free gets the buzzer, for perhaps being the worst bat and ball game ever. Your ball, which should of course ricochet off tiles, does not. It sort of sometimes bounces around obliterating them, and sometimes simply falls out of the air. And what is this for nonsense collision detection? For an early 90s commercial release, Missile Jammer is also laughable. Move left and right and, ahem, jam the missiles if you can. You won't be able to, though, for long, because the game chucks impossible to catch missiles at you. Almost as soon as it starts, in fact. 
Codebreaker rounds this off with the opportunity to guess a combination of colours. Words fail me, man. <laughs>